Hey everyone, the name is Victor and today's video is about the importance of having critical and objective definitions when trying to type yourself and other people, when trying to understand personality psychology as a whole. And I'm making this video because a lot of YouTubers out there are quick to spread definitions of personality type and of personality psychology and of different personality types that are ultimately very rooted in bias. Their definitions of a personality type are very obviously biased from a negative or positive perspective. A certain personality type can be idealized and another can be demonized. Your own personality type is often held in higher regard than other personality types. Everyone is gravitating towards personal bias. Everyone is quick to try to rationalize negative experiences and bad interactions they've had with others in the past. Ultimately, what this is driving is a lot of mistyping, a lot of misinformation, a lot of content, and a lot of theories that lack critical assessment, and so a lot of definitions that ultimately mislead and misguide people and cause problems for the entire community of typology. So I think what we need to move towards in the Myers-Briggs type indicator and in typology as a whole is towards a critical mindset. So what we need to do is we need to become more aware of stereotypes, of misconceptions, and of bias in personality psychology. And what we have to look at, and this is the fourth and perhaps most important thing, is why this definition? What is the value or meaning or use of having this definition instead of other definitions. You know, anybody can come up with a definition about what, how to define every, any single personality trait. But why that definition? What is the point on a personal growth level? What is the use? How can we use this concept or definition? And what can it teach us and what can it give us? Ultimately, what we're all trying to do is psychology. It's not behavioralism. We're not simply trying to classify behavior. We're not trying to create simple behavioralistic stereotypes. You know, if you're outgoing, you're an extrovert. If you're reserved, you're an introvert. If you're a bit crazy, you're an intuitive. You know, what we're ultimately trying to do is not the behavior itself. It's not the study of the behavior itself, but it's the study of the motivation, the interest, the thought process, the reasoning, the cognitive functions of the individual and why they are doing what they are doing. We're trying to figure out a person's psychology, why they are doing what they are doing. And this is rooted in motivations and inner thought process and a clear reasoning, rationalization processes and things that are subjective in their nature. They're found only inside and we can only understand them by looking at and trying to gog at that person's motivations. So what I see is there's a lot of toxic and bad habits in typology in itself. Uh, one classic thing that comes to mind is that desire to assert your own opinions about a person's personality type without giving them a chance to give their own opinion on themselves. A lot of people are quick to dish out and say you're that type. You're not that type. You're mistyped. You've got it wrong. You don't know anything. I know Go to any single YouTuber, MTI YouTuber's YouTube channel and you'll find people there that are quick to challenge their read. You know, a problem in itself in this is first, people are too quick to challenge another person's read. They've watched perhaps one minute of their video. They've looked at perhaps a single uh, moment of that person's history and they've used that to define that person's personality type. We are too quick to make up our mind about other people, too quick to come up to a decision about another person's personality type. We're too prone to speed typing and too attracted to the thought of speed typing. We're looking for and we're trying to figure out how to type anybody in under a minute, when in reality what we should be trying to do is we should be trying to admit to and be humble before the complexity of human nature. What that means is, a human's personality is too complex to be understood in a minute. You cannot think through and become aware of every single nuance of another person's personality in under a minute. People are too complex, too deep and have too many layers 
to be figured out that quickly. We need multiple pieces of information, multiple contexts about their history. We need multiple assessments. We need big data to back up our reads and our knowledge of another person. So what I see is a lot of people will rush to define a single personality trait. Like, that guy is obviously extroverted. But oh yeah, what kind of extrovert do you mean? In what way is he extroverted? In what situations is he not extroverted? And in which ways are he, is he extroverted? What we have to do is we have to be able to look at the nuances and the boundaries of every single definition we use. How and when they connect with other concepts. How different things are built up by other things. We have to recognize when a person has a strong judging preference or a strongly proactive drive and how that can confuse the person to look extroverted. We have to recognize when sometimes feeling will look like or mimic intuition. We have to look at the limits and boundaries of each concept together and we have to look at and understand the full whole of a person before we try to give them a read or before we try to give them a label on what their personality is. So. With the study of the subjective, with the study of personality, we have to give other people a chance to look at our evidence and our definitions. Instead of simply telling another person what type they are, we need to give them the evidence to verify what type they are. We need to give them the information to make an informed decision. Rather than say, you're not an INTP, you're an INFP. We have to give them the evidence for why they should look at INFP instead of INTP. And then we need to give them a chance to correct our misconceptions and misunderstandings. We have to give them a chance to look at our definition critically and to say, is this a good or bad definition? And we also have to give them a chance to correct our misunderstandings. If we missed something in the video, if we misunderstood a word or a choice of word they used, if we misunderstood the context of why they said something, we have to give people a chance to introspect and assess our reads. And this is goes both ways. Before you type another person, you should take perhaps a day, perhaps a week to process through and assess their read. Write down, okay, this is what I think, but then go over the things that could be wrong. Rate your confidence. Always rate your confidence. How confident am I about this? Give yourself on scale 1 to 10, how confident am I about this? What am I confident about and what am I not confident about? What contradictions are there that challenge my interpretation? What is it I need to know to clarify and prove my read of another person? And this process needs time. The process of reviewing and assessing your own read will take time. You cannot assess on the spot. You have to give yourself a time to process and make up your mind. Just as you have to give the other person time to process and make up their mind. Push another person to challenge or disagree with you immediately. The chances are they will either disagree with you outright on a gut basis because they feel attacked. Or they will agree to your definition because they're insecure, but not because they know what you're talking about. In typology, there's a lot of channels that they build themselves on their personal reputation. Their personality becomes the charm, the attractor that drives people to their channel. It's not rooted in the science, it's not rooted in the critical uh, bias, it's not rooted in the strength of their definitions or of their theories, but it's rooted in their ability to build an authority for themselves. You know, a lot of people, they almost gravitate towards a cult leader status, where it's like they build up their own image of how perfect and infallible they are, and where nobody ultimately dares to challenge them. So they build up a reputation where they cannot be criticized and challenged, where they're always right and where they know everything. And they do this because they realize I have no other means to back up my thoughts. If nobody believes in me, everybody will challenge me. If nobody trusts me, everybody will disagree with me. If I cannot build up authority in what I say, other people will constantly argue about the semantics and the definitions that I bring forward. People will disseminate my content, dissect my content, and take away the value of what I do. 
So I want to end this video on that final thought. What is the value of what we do? The value of what we do is studying flow and stress and motivation. The ability, the better you are at predicting another person's motivations, the better you will be at motivating said person. The better you are at understanding another person's interests, the better you will be at making another, people, another person feel rewarded for what they are doing. The better you understand a person's grounders, the better you will be at respecting their boundaries. The more you can recognize another person's control style, the better you will be at making sure they feel relaxed and secure around you. And this goes for yourself too. The better you understand this about yourself, the better decisions you will be able to make, the happier you will be able to be, the more flow you will have. And ultimately we're all driven towards flow, or driven towards the search of flow and self-enlightenment and self-actualization. Almost every single MBTI YouTuber out there will admit to this, or this much. We are doing this for personal growth. We are doing this to gain self-awareness. We are doing this to become happier in our career, in our relationships with others and in our life as a whole. We are searching for peace of mind, satisfaction, joy, pride in self and that state of satisfaction and uh, that feeling of uh, being satisfied, being happy with yourself just the way you are. So I think uh, when Dave Superpowers came about and launched that concept, you know, objective personality, a lot of people were skeptical. A lot of YouTubers out there were like, what is this? Who do they think they are? Who do they think they are to call themselves objective? Ultimately, the whole system in itself brought forward insecurity of dozens of YouTubers and bloggers out there. A lot of people got insecure because they came to realize just ultimately how subjective their content was, how poorly thought out, how rushed, how stereotypical their content was. So they were quick to say, this is wrong, this is not right, this, this cannot be true, this cannot, I cannot accept this, you know. <laughs> and that's just the problem of the human mind, you know. When you're brought and made aware of the contradictions of your own thoughts and theories, you have two choices. Either you can attack the people who brought up the contradictions, or you can adjust your concepts, admit and be humble in your flaws, and you can move forward, and you can hit a higher point of enlightenment. Yeah, that's what you're ultimately going towards, you know. You have to look over your own concepts, your own theories, your own definitions and go, is this FI? Is this TI? Is this NI? Or have I been bullshitting all along? Maybe I had it 50% right. Maybe I had it 30% right. Maybe I was completely off. Maybe I had it all together. What you have to look at when you're looking at the definitions presented to you online, when you look at the videos and the material you read and what you hear is you, have, you should try to make a note for yourself. Whatever you, video you watch, whatever content you read, look at the definition and go, does this make sense? What is good about this definition? How does it compare to other content and other theories? People have, there are so many different theories out there. So many different thoughts. A lot of people go and use this as an argument that it's all bullshit. If there are hundreds of definitions, what's the point of any of them? That's when you realize you have to synthesize. You have to learn from experience. And you have to discuss. And you have to look over and contrast and look at content together. You cannot satisfy with only one perspective. You have to look at different perspectives, different interpretations, different takes. You have to mesh them all together and hold them up against each other's. So perhaps it's time to create more videos and more content that will ultimately dissect the definitions and arguments and the content of other YouTubers and other theories out there. Maybe it's time to start really evaluating and examining other people's theories. Instead of just remaining in our own bubbles, maybe it's time to dig deeper 
And that's why I've actually opened a subscription with uh, Objective Personality. That's why I'm digging into that system right now. I'm going to look through that and I'm going to look carefully and critically and I'm going to think for myself, did I have it right or did I have it wrong? Could I clarify something here? Could I learn something here? Could I improve something here? Could I share something here that will make something better? And once again, ultimately, it's all about personal growth and it's all about the subjective factor. It's all about per people's personal feelings and personal motivations. The more you feel you can understand human nature from that perspective, the closer you will be to truth. So there is a way to ultimately prove it all. There is a way to ultimately figure it all out. It's not impossible because every step you take, every clarification you make is going to make you a better leader, a better friend, a better partner, a better person in every situation of your life. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.